the surprising things that can make your home harder to sell. We'll have that and more up next. Your real estate news starts now. Thank you for watching your real estate news. I'm Stacey Hansen. Here are your headlines. The U.S. home ownership rate rose slightly in the third quarter of 2016 to 63.5%. That number is still slightly behind the 63.7% rate of one year ago, according to data released by the U.S. Census Bureau. There were more than 1.1 million household formations in the third quarter nationwide. That's up from 944,000 in the second quarter. More than half of those were home owners. Individuals under the age of 35 accounted for over 32 percent of homeowners during the third quarter of this year. Home prices were also up just over 5 percent nationwide in August compared to a year earlier, according to the U.S. National Home Price Index. Despite some backlash against Thanksgiving Day shopping, several major retailers have decided to open their doors that day. Wisconsin-based department store Kohl's is planning to open at 6 p.m. on Thanksgiving this year. Kohl's will also start its doorbuster deals on Monday, November 21st online at Kohl's.com. J.C. Penney will also open its doors at 3 p.m. on Thanksgiving to begin its Black Friday deals. Macy's and Toys R Us are also planning to open some of their locations at 5 p.m. on Thanksgiving. West Town and East Town Malls, as well as the Hildell Shopping Center in Madison, have all announced plans to be closed on Thanksgiving Day this year, according to the Wisconsin State Journal. Many industry players are changing their approach to Thanksgiving openings this year. Minnesota's Mall of America has announced that they will be closed on Thanksgiving this year after years of being open on the holiday. CNBC reports that shoppers expect to spend 47 percent of their holiday budgets online, meaning this could be the first holiday where shoppers split their spending equally between bricks and mortar stores and e-commerce sites. If you're preparing your home for sale, the last thing you want to do is something that will actually decrease your home's value. Money Magazine put together a report on the things that actually make your home harder to sell. Several of them boil down to curb appeal or unappeal in this case. If the home is messy or in need of repainting, it could sour a potential buyer's experience, according to Money. An unkept yard or too unique a landscaping design could also be turnoffs for buyers. On the inside of the house, Money suggests steering away from too much clutter and displays of personal collections. Paneling and wall-to-wall -wall carpet over hardwood floors could also make your home harder to sell, according to Money. Don't go away, we'll have more real estate news right after the break. Welcome back to the Real Estate News. I'm now with Bill Lockwood from Acquire Restoration. Welcome, Bill. Great to have you on the show. So give us a rundown of the services that you typically provide to realtors. Well, uh, usually when a commercial or a residential property is sold, uh, there'll be a, a, an inspection done. And whenever there's an issue that might be discovered, that's where Acquire would come in and help alleviate those issues so that we can meet the closing date for the realtor. Can you give us an example of some of those issues? Sure. Uh, quite often, uh, after an inspection, we'll find that there was mold discovered in the attic of a home. Uh, we can come in and make sure that it's properly removed, not affecting the other areas of the structure. It, it might have been due to improper ventilation or excessive moisture, whatever the reason would be. But we want to make sure that we remove it in a safe and effective manner. I imagine a lot of different things come into play with this. What are some of the things that you have to consider when a realtor calls you with one of these issues? Well, you, the big thing with realtors is that they deal on a deadline and a closing date. And so when we get called in, we operate with kind of a firehouse mentality, uh, a sense of urgency, if you will, uh, to make sure that we can get in and get what's done to address their issues in a timely fashion so that they can stay on schedule for the closing dates. And it's great that you're able to kind of keep up with their schedule too. What are some of the other benefits that you can offer to realtors? Well, uh, the fact that we're uh, an emergency company, so we're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, when it comes to other areas, you might run into things like uh, uh, you know flooring issues and, and knowing that we have proper certified technicians, people that have gone for formal training, uh, you know that somebody's going to be out there to do the job for you that, that has been properly trained to uh, execute the issues. And I know that you guys over there are really big into training and you're, and you're really on top of your game over there. So you know that you're getting an expert when you go to acquire rest restoration. 
Now, how large of an area do you provide services to? Is it just kind of the Madison area, or how far do you go? Well, the, actually, uh, we, we're one of the largest restoration companies in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, Jeff Edmonds, our owner, uh, he started the company in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, 10 years ago. And he, since that point in time, he opened our Madison office, which has been here for five years. We also have an office in Kakana, Wisconsin, and we just recently opened an office in Waterloo, Iowa. Uh, this gives us a tremendous market coverage advantage over our competition. So there's a really a, a large area um, that people can utilize you for. Now, how do people get in touch with you if they're interested? Well, I mean, they can see us at AcquireRestoration.com. Uh, uh, they can call us up. We're uh, right there in the book. Uh, we can, you can find us on Facebook, uh, on LinkedIn. We have a Twitter account. Uh, there's a good number of ways. We're not hard to find, and, and certainly we, we want to make sure people know that we're large enough to serve you, and we're still small enough to care. Great. Thanks so much for me. Thanks so much for stopping by. It was wonderful to meet you, Bill. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Welcome back to the Real Estate News. I'm now with Josh Lovick with Keller Williams. Welcome back, Josh. Thanks for coming on the show today. So give us a briefing. What's going on in real estate in your world this month? Yeah. Hey, thanks for having me on. So we got some exciting things happening this month. Um, actually, a bunch of new listings we just listed over on the east side of Madison. So uh, some great new listings all under 200000 um, which is good for first-time buyers. You can actually still buy a house with like 3 to 5% down. You don't have to have 20% down payment. So, you know, good options that could be a good alternative to renting. So you mind if I just give them to you kind of rapid fire? Yeah, yeah. tell me more about these. Okay, cool. Well, we've got, so the first one is at 528 Memphis. It's um, over on the east side of Madison, kind of off of Highway 30 in North Fair Oaks. Really cute Cape Cod. There's two bedrooms of the upstairs, one on the main floor. Uh, wood floors, fireplace, real cool. Uh, another one over 4524 Camden, um, over on the east side off of Buckeye Road. Uh, another kind of classic ranch. This one's just a two bedroom, but the cool part about it is that it used to be a three bedroom. They knocked down the wall in between and like made this massive master bedroom. So kind of a cool place there. Uh, another one on the east side, 5002 Alice Avenue. It's uh, got a huge corner lot. So if you're looking for a little bit more space for a pretty low price, that's a good option. Uh, 2705 Moland is another one on the east side. Um, really cool wood floors in that one. They, it's like a bamboo wood floors and then there's a skylight in the bathroom which is pretty cool too. Wow that's so, cool. <laughs> yeah definitely. And then uh, no, one more we did also at 3529 Dennett Drive. It's over uh, on Ober over near Oldbrook Park. So if you like uh, you know biking and being near the lake you can actually see part of the lake from that property. Oh nice. Well they sound great. Do you think they're gonna go fast? Uh, yeah, I do. You know, actually, we just sold a house kind of similar to these over on the north side over at 4301 Barbie Lane. That one we had actually five offers the first week it was on the market. So definitely a fast moving price range. So I'd suggest, uh, you know, if the, these are of interest to, uh, you know, try to get in there as soon as possible. Yeah, they're going quick. Five offers is great. <laughs> so you've got a new website as well. Yeah, we've got, uh, <clears throat> that's kind of the big thing that we've been working on. We've been working on it for a couple months, but uh, we completely updated and revamped our website. It's really pretty awesome. So you can go right on the, right on the homepage. We got a big search bar there. You can search homes by any address that you see, you know, regardless of what company has a property for sale. Search by any address, search by school district. Say you want to be in a certain school in a neighborhood. Um, search by neighborhood, search by area. You know, just type in whatever you're looking for, and it's really easy. So, um, plus there's an interactive map search thing. You can actually draw out kind of your ideal criteria, like, hey, I only want to be in this specific spot. So, really easy to use. Plus, it's all uh, actually mobile friendly, so you can search on your you know smartphone device, or you can search on TV on your uh, desktop computer. Kind of interchange of the two. Yeah, there's some really cool features on there. Um, mm -hmm. any, anything else that you want to mention about that website? Um, let's see. So again, we tried to make it real easy for people to search. So we've got a bunch of kind of one-click easy searches. So if you want just like all the foreclosures in an area or all open houses coming up for the weekend or all waterfront properties or all, you know, um, golf course properties, anything that had a recent price reduction, you know, those are all just real easy to see right at a glance, one click, boom, you're right there, you see a nice list of properties and, uh, and it's real easy to browse. Yeah, it makes things really easy for that home search. Definitely check that out. Well, thanks so much, Josh. Thank you.
Welcome back to the Real Estate News. I'm now with Kate Paulus. She's from Bella Domicile. Thanks for coming, Kate. Yes, thanks for having me. So I wanted to talk fixer-uppers today because that's kind of a hot topic. A lot of people are buying fixer-uppers or flipping homes. Would you say it's a good financial decision from a remodeling standpoint? Yes, um, and now is the time to buy a fixer-upper. The, the question is gonna be on the condition of the home, the purchase price. There's a lot of factors that are involved with it, um, but there's some great fixer-uppers out there on the market right now. Look at the neighborhood, look at the price, and see if it's the right one for you. So it could be a great decision. How do you help at Bella Domicile with these? Yeah, so when you're looking at buying a fixer-upper, the best thing you can do is have Bella Domicile come out there to the home before you purchase it. We can do an initial assessment of the inside, the interior of the home, and see what kind of budget you're looking at for putting into the space. So if somebody maybe has a more limited budget or they're just looking to do a few rooms, what rooms would you say are the most important to consider remodeling if you've got a fixer-upper? Yes, and that's a great question we receive all the time. Um, the best rooms you can look at, the most return on investment you'll see right away is gonna be the kitchen and the master suite. Okay, so I can see definitely why you would say the kitchen. Why the master suite? Is it because you spend more time there or why yeah, do you say that? Yeah, and usually the homeowners, they want kind of a little oasis, their little separate area of the home where they can really relax and make it their own. So having that master suite, having an ensuite bathroom attached to that master suite, that's what they're really looking for. What about the, the bathrooms? Do you see people remodeling those a lot of times in, in those fixer-uppers? Yes, yeah, so we are doing bathrooms constantly. Um, I'd say right up there with kitchens, it's going to be the amount of bathrooms we're doing every year. Year. Um, bathrooms from hall bathrooms for a little freshen up remodel um, all the way to extreme master bathrooms that are the size of kitchens often. Um, so it just depends on how many bathrooms are in there and what we can do to the space to help out. So it sounds like you can really do, if somebody's just looking for kind of like a little facelift or a complete redo, you, yes. you do both. Yes, exactly. So if somebody has decided to purchase the fixer upper, um, how do they, they contact you or what do they do first? Do they have to already have a sense of what they want or do you take them from that no, first No, I mean, we have clients that absolutely cannot determine on a style. They don't know if they have a style. And so our involvement starts from the beginning. Um, we'll walk you through the fixer hopper and ask some questions and kind of do some interviewing to see what style you like, what it is about the fixer upper that drew you to this house in the first place and how we can make that even better and how we can make that stand out for you. I know that I would feel already, just from talking to you, more comfortable buying a fixer-upper knowing that I had um, professional assistance with, with getting it the way that I wanted it to. Yes, and it's, it's a fun process. It's not often that someone gets to renovate and do a fixer-upper and so we want to be there right holding your hand and helping you every step of the way. And you get exactly what you want. Well, thanks so much, Kate, for coming yes, by. thank you. Welcome back to the Real Estate News. I'm now with Vanessa Flores. She's with Lake Point Realty. Welcome, Vanessa. So you're filling in for Rob today. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Sir, so I know you guys typically like to highlight a neighborhood that you're working in right now. Where are your buyers interested in looking at right now? Well, I've seen an increase of interest in the Hawthorne area. Um, it's conveniently located by Obrick Park, the bike path, Atwood and Willie Street. So you're getting a very bikeable, walkable location at an affordable price. So I've seen a lot of buyers interest um, in that area. And that is really a great neighborhood to live in. Now I'm sure you're always looking for listings. If somebody's looking to list with you, uh, where do they start? Well, the best way to get started is to contact a realtor to discuss the value of your home in this market. At Lake Point Realty, we have no obligation, zero pressure listing consults. So I will actually sit down and meet with you to go over comparables in your area um, and figure out the value of your home. So we will discuss that together and go through, go from there. Any tips for sellers um, when they're getting ready to list? Because you've, you've pretty much seen it all at this point. Yeah, so sellers should know that they want their home to be ready for buyers to come through. So that will be decluttering, cleaning, uh, making sure that you have great curb appeal, as well as if there's any home improvement projects that you haven't gotten done yet, you should go ahead and do that. Um, if there's any major concerns with your home, you wanna address that before you list as well. Good advice. Now let's go to the flip side. What about home buyers? Do you have any advice for them as they're beginning to purchase a new home, maybe even for first time buyers? 
Yeah, I do. Um, so talk to a lender, get pre-approved, find out what price range you are in and what you feel comfortable with. Um, once you do that, find a realtor that you have good communication with, that you get along with, easy to talk to, and help them and have them help you figure out your needs versus wants, because that's often two things that get that people have a hard time distinguishing, and then um, start your home buying process. And as their realtor, you're there to help. So what are some of the ways that you're helping buyers and sellers through this process? Sure. As a realtor, what I do for my clients is negotiate on their behalf, protect their best interests, and help them navigate through this process. So my job is to make sure that their transaction goes as smoothly as possible because sometimes it can get hectic and a little stressful and I am here, I'm there to help. Absolutely, and so great to have you on their side. Well, thanks Vanessa for stopping by today. Thank you. Welcome back to the Real Estate News. I'm now with Andrew Kimball. He's the owner of Kimball Realtors. So welcome, Andrew. How's the market in the Wisconsin Dells? You know, it's getting a little quieter now that we've hit November. It's got a little quieter, but I think part of that is that there's not a lot of inventory on the market. We've got buyers calling us every day. So if sellers still want to get on the market, it's still a good time. Buyers still out, are out there looking. Yeah, it's definitely still a good time to continue into the fall, like you said. So tell us more about um, Kimball, Kimball Realtors. Um, tell us about the agents that you have working for you. Sure. One of the things we're very proud of with Kimball Realtors is that we let our agents specialize in the areas and types of properties that they like to sell. For example, Jennifer um, specializes in the Castle, Lock, Castle Rock Lake area. She'll specialize in single family homes and vacation homes. And she also specializes in condominiums on Lake Dalton. We have Bob who is actually a retired military and so he likes to work with uh, veterans and he works in the um, Christmas Mountain Golf Estates area as well as the Wisconsin Dells area and also working with veterans is one of his specialties. And Lori is a Chicago girl. Her family actually had a real estate company as she was growing up in Chicago and she's got the mentality of I want everything done yesterday already. And so the Chicago buyers tend to, um, buyers and sellers tend to gravitate towards her and um, so we have a lot of workers that, that work with her. The Chicago buyers are her specialty, but she does a lot of vacation homes, luxury homes, and condominiums as well. You've got a really good mix there. It sounds like you can really serve a wide variety of people really well. Um, do your agents have their own websites that people can look at? Yes, so in addition to their own profile on our, our main website, WisconsinDellsHomesForSale.com, Bob has WeLoveChristmasMountain.com. He also has WisconsinDroneHomes.com because he's one of the few realtors that has an FAA exemption for legally using his drone. And Jennifer also has Castle Rock Lake AreaHomes.com and Lori has Wisconsin Dells Real Estate Biz, Wisconsin Dells Real Estate Biz also. So how do we go about contacting them, one of your agents, if someone um, sees that someone's already going to be a match for them? Sure. Um, the best way would be to look at our website, WisconsinDellsHomesForSale.com. On the About Us page, you'll have a bio of each one of our realtors and also their email address and their phone numbers to get a hold of them. So just go to WisconsinDellsHomesForSale.com. Okay, and very quickly, just a couple seconds left. Um, should people do a phone interview with an agent before they start working with them? I think so. It's very important to get a good rapport with the agent that you're going to work with. And so interviewing an agent is a really good idea just to, to get a rapport with, with the agent that you're going to be working with. Definitely good advice. Well, thanks so much, Andrew. Good to see you again. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Welcome back to the Real Estate News. I'm now with Eric Hobbenschild. He's the branch manager at Pacific Union Financial. Welcome, Eric. Good to have you here. Thanks for having me. So let's talk about buying that new home. Always an exciting topic for people. Where do you start? Where do you recommend? So that's a good question. Um, buying a home can be a daunting process. Um, you know, regardless if you're spending $80,000 or $500,000, it's a lot of money and it's a big financial decision. So you know, the best place to start is to talk to a lender and see what you're pre-approved for. Um, just because you're pre-approved for a dollar amount doesn't mean you have to spend that dollar. Um, but you kind of want to know what you're pre-approved for, get an idea of what the payments are going to be on that size of a mortgage. Um, you know, so you can decide if, if you know, you're comfortable with that level. 
Um, you know, the lender can also help you decide what program makes the most financial sense for your situation. There's a lot of different kinds of programs out there and, you know, you only deal with buying a home probably a couple times in your life. And so it's not like you're dealing with that stuff on a day-to-day -day basis. So, you know, you really need a lender to help you decide what program makes the most sense for your situation um, so that you can put yourself in the best situation possible. So let's say you find that, that dream home, you put an offer on it, you get your offer accepted, which is a great feeling. Now, now what do you do? So great question. So really at that point, um, pre previous to that, when I you know, did the pre-approval for you, um, I'm really kind of sitting on the sidelines, walk, you know, waiting for you to find that perfect home. Once you've found that home and the offer is accepted, um, at that point, my job really starts. Um, so you know, at that point, what we do is you know, we again discuss the different programs that are available for you. Um, we decide you know, um, what program makes the most sense. And at that point, I send your disclosures out to you. Um, once you receive those, there's going to be a whole laundry list of items that I'm going to need from you uh, to get back to me so that we can get your file in underwriting and get the appraisal ordered and the title work ordered, etc. Um, you know, during the same process, you're going to be getting a home inspection done, which is a, a smart thing to do so that you know what you're getting yourself into. You know, if there's a huge issue with the foundation or a leaking roof, I mean, these are things that you want to know. Um, that could cost you thousands of dollars after you buy. So you really want to go into this whole process with your eyes wide open. Um, one, while your file is in, in, in the underwriting process, it's kind of a waiting game for you. you know. And what, what the lender's job is, is to really help guide you through that process and try to make uh, what is typically a pretty stressful situation at least as unstressful as possible. What about other costs that people might have other than the down payment? That's a good question. So there's obviously the down payment that's involved, um, depending on the loan program, um, but there's going to be some hard costs to the loan. Um, hard costs are things like the appraisal, the title work, the underwriting and processing fees, etc. Um, but then there's also the establishment of your escrow account. Um, we're going to set aside a couple months worth of taxes and a couple months of insurance in an escrow account so that we can take care of those for you as they they come due. So, you know, closing costs can range from zero all the way on up. I try to like to keep that total right in that $3,000 bucket. Um, can be a little bit less, can be a little bit more, just depending on what option you um, elect to go on. Definitely something to think about. Well, thanks so much for stopping by, Eric. I appreciate it. Have a great day. Special thanks to our guests for stopping by today and to you, our viewers, for tuning in. Be sure to join us again next week. I'm Stacey Hansen for The Real Estate News, making a positive impact and leading the real estate market.